One of the most common questions I've been asked is what are the best ETFs for long-term investing? You see, I actively try to find investment opportunities that tend to get buried behind all the noise surrounding popular ETFs. And the purpose of my research is to find superior alternatives that outperform typical investments like the S&P 500, but most importantly, still manage to embody all the benefits, creating an even more complete package. And the two key factors I focus on is growth ability and risk mitigation. If a fund is able to outperform the S&P 500 in growth and is also able to provide superior risk mitigation, then you know it's an intriguing investment. In one of my previous videos, I talk about an alternative to the very popular S&P 500 ETFs, and if you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out right here. This time I found something else, but there's two major details that caught my attention, and investors really need to pay close attention to this. This is where things get really interesting. SPY is one of the largest and most heavily traded ETFs in the world, and we all know and love this ETF. It's been praised by well-known investors like Warren Buffett, and has been used to create the benchmark 50-50 retirement portfolio. But the fund has two major problems, price and risk. So let me explain. SPY is a market cap weighted index and tech stocks have the largest market capitalization in the world and therefore have the largest impact on the overall index. So the key driver behind the S&P 500 growth is simply technology stocks. When you look at the sector breakdown of the S&P 500 and its performance year to date, of the total 18.87% rise, 10.95% is all because of information technology. And just for some clarity, this chart right here represents the overall impact of the different sectors within the S&P 500. And over here where it says BP, which stands for basis points, is what represents the impact of the individual sectors. So you can see on the total breakdown year to date, S&P 500 has increased by 1,887 basis points and 1,095 of that is associated with information technology. And just so you know, every 100 basis points represents 1%. So the overwhelming impact it has on the overall index is quite clear. Now, if you go even further and just count the performance of the top seven companies within the S&P 500, of the total 18.87% rise in the S&P 500, these companies are responsible for more than 13% of it. You see, the problem with such an investment is risk. Technology stocks are very susceptible to downside risk and during a recession, these stocks tend to take the hardest hits. And because the S&P 500 has around 30% of its assets allocated towards the technology sector, its risk is rather concentrated in the tech sector. And during bear markets, the fund does suffer substantial losses. The most recent example, the 2022 bear market, where the S&P 500 fell by more than 18%. Now, the other major issue is price. SPY is an expensive ETF with the value of each share exceeding $400. And the same goes for the other S&P 500 ETFs like VOO or IVB. And there's two major downsides to this. For one is the psychological effect. An expensive stock has a psychological effect on new, smaller investors who might be deterred from an investment they may perceive as too expensive. And frankly, that is why many well-known stocks like Apple, Amazon, and Tesla will regularly do what's called a stock split, simply to make the stock more affordable for a broader range of investors, potentially increasing stock price and liquidity by attracting new shareholders. The second is when you want to trade options. And I've been very vocal about utilizing options to maximize profits of an investment portfolio. Now, I did explain this in my previous video, but for those who haven't seen it yet, here's a quick summary. If you're an investor using covered calls or cash secured puts, it can be the perfect way to increase your returns on an investment and generate a little extra cash. But when the price of the stock is rather expensive, it becomes increasingly difficult to use these option strategies. Let's say you want to use covered calls to generate extra cash. Now, for each call option that you sell, you must own 100 shares of stock. Otherwise, you'll be doing what's called naked short selling, which is very dangerous. If you want to sell two call options against SPY, you need to own 200 shares of the ETF. Now, given that the price of the ETF is around $440, you need to have the equivalent of $88,000 in your account. And the same goes for cash secured puts. Now, a cheaper ETF would require a lot less capital to use these strategies. Now let's circle back to risk. 
If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate it so very much. Thank you guys, let's move on. When you look at the holding breakdown of SPY, there's no other sector that has a comparable allocation. Everything else is substantially less. You see, what if there was an ETF that had just as high of an allocation in the value sector as it did in the growth sector, almost acting as the perfect counterweight? So the fund would benefit in an upward trend and be able to mitigate downside risk significantly better. This brings me to CGDV, which is the Capital Group Dividend Value ETF. This ETF is very interesting and it has garnered quite a lot of attention. And most importantly, it is growing extremely fast, which is always a good sign. So let's run through some fundamentals so you can get a better understanding of this ETF. CGDV was established on February 22nd, 2022, so it is extremely new. Now, despite the fund's recent inception date, it has more than $3 billion of assets under management. That is extremely rapid growth and for good reason. The fund currently has an expense ratio of 0.3%, which isn't bad, but of course it is on the higher end, especially when you compare it to SPY. And just for reference, for every $10,000 invested, you pay $30 in annual fees. Now, I may have lost you on the expense ratio, but believe me, you're going to want to stick around until the end. The fund currently has a dividend yield of over 1.6%, which is on par with the S&P 500, but it is growing at a very rapid pace. I mean, just looking at its 12 month trailing dividend growth rate, you see exactly what I mean. But we'll circle back to that in just a second. So how does this fund work? CGDV is an actively managed fund that primarily invests in stocks of dividend paying large and mid cap US companies. The fund seeks to produce income exceeding the average yield on US stocks. Very important. So the fund looks for dividend paying stocks of larger, well-established companies in the US with market capitalizations greater than $4 billion. Now, this is where things get interesting. Generally, 90% of equity assets are invested in companies rated investment grade. This part indicates that the fund prioritizes investing in stocks of companies with good credit quality. So why is this important? For one, preservation of capital. Companies with investment grade debt are seen as having lower risk of default, which means investors are more likely to preserve their invested capital. Now, an even more important reason is income stability. Such companies are known for maintaining stable dividend payments and such ensuring a consistent income stream for investors, especially those who rely on dividends. This also translates to lower volatility. Investment grade rated companies typically have lower volatility, resulting in a smoother investment experience with fewer significant price swings. These are exactly the type of characteristics you'd want to maximize risk mitigation. Now on top of that, the fund may invest up to 10% of its assets in equities of larger companies outside the US, increasing diversification. Since its inception, granted it was rather recent, it did endure almost the entire bear market of 2022. It has returned double that of the S&P 500 at almost 15% versus 7%. So far the fund has superior growth ability, which is fantastic. But what about risk mitigation? Looking from the fund's inception date to the end of 2022, the fund was able to outperform the S&P 500, losing only 2.8% versus 9.2%. This is absolutely amazing. So how is it doing this? When you look at the fund's holding breakdown, you notice something quite interesting. Majority of the fund's assets are allocated towards two sectors, industrials and technology, taking up more than 40% of the fund's total assets. This is quite unique and extremely important. You see, SPY is a growth oriented index, hence the heavy tech sector allocation. But a value oriented index would typically have heavy holdings in sectors like industrials, consumer staples, financials, and energy. But amongst these sectors, which had the best overall performance? This chart right here gives the complete breakdown of the different sector performances within the S&P 500 since 2008. And what I've noticed is that industrials and consumer staples are amongst the best performing value sectors. They have the least amount of drawdown accompanied with phenomenal upside. And when you highlight each sector on this chart, you see that industrials and consumer staples all align within the center and the top of this overall chart. So none of them sit at the bottom as the worst performing sector in a given year, as opposed to other popular value sectors like financials, which tend to underperform significantly in certain years. 
but amongst these two, industrials tends to have the higher potential for growth, historically speaking. And that is reflected in the fund's holding breakdown. Almost 45% is allocated towards these two sectors. The technology sector giving the fund superior growth ability and industrials providing the fund with fantastic risk mitigation, decreasing price volatility. This chart right here highlights the difference in sector breakdown between SPY and CGDV, and you can clearly see the difference. Now, we can't forget about the other major benefit of this ETF, which is its price. This ETF's price per share value is only $27, which is significantly cheaper than SPY. So not only does this allow investors to easily purchase shares, it's also beneficial for those who want to trade options. With a fund this cheap, in order to sell two covered calls, you need to own 200 shares, which translates to only $5,500 in capital. Again, significantly cheaper. And it's important to note that the fund does have relatively high assets under management at over $3 billion, which means that the fund is very liquid. And for those who don't know, a fund with high liquidity means that investors are subject to very low bid to ask spreads. And for those who don't know, this means that the difference between the highest price the buyer is willing to pay versus the lowest price that the seller is willing to sell is extremely low. Granted, it's nowhere near the liquidity of SPY, but for individuals who want to use covered calls or cash secured puts passively to generate extra income, they would be able to do it with this ETF. Now let's talk about dividends. I mean, it is a major focus of this ETF. Looking back at the fund's description, it states that it seeks to produce income exceeding the average yield on US stocks. Currently, the fund has a dividend yield of 1.61%, which is actually higher than SPY. But when you look at the fund's dividend history and dividend growth rate, you can clearly see the rapid increase in yield with a trailing 12-month growth rate of 431%. Now, of course, this is only extremely high because the fund has been around for just one year. But I am very interested to see how this ETF's dividend yield will grow in the next couple of years. So far, this fund sounds absolutely amazing. But this wouldn't be a complete video if I didn't talk about the downsides. For one, the expense ratio is not the best, but it's also not the worst either. It would be a lot more favorable if the expense ratio was below 0.2%. But the biggest downside is concentration risk. You see, nearly 50% of the fund's total holdings are in its top 10, and the ETF only has 53 individual holdings. A concentrated ETF means the risk is concentrated. So it's not as diverse as I'd want it to be, but at the same time, the balance between value and growth sectors give the fund superior ability to grow at a rapid pace and mitigate downside risk. And as I mentioned before, this gives the fund less volatility, and that is why the fund has a beta value of 0.9. And for those who don't know, a fund with a beta value below one means that it exhibits less volatility than the overall market. Now, unfortunately, there are no Sharpe or Certino ratios because the fund is very new, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this ETF will perform over the next two to three years. So for now, I'm going to keep my eye on it. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!